This is my Bible. Wait a minute. I ain't got my Bible in my hand. Hold on. <laughs> this is my Bible. This is God speaking to me. My eyes are open. My heart is prepared to receive all of God's promises and instruction. Today, I make my Bible the final authority in my life so that in all circumstance, I will bear good fruit and others will see Christ in me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Heavenly Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come this morning. Again, Father, first off, thanking you for this gift of life that you have given us. We understand and, and realize, Father God, that without you, nothing is impossible. So we thank you. As we get ready to bring your word, Father God, I ask that you will decrease, you will increase as I decrease, Father God, that your people may hear from you this morning. What thus says the Lord, I know there was a word, a word prepared, Father God, and I ask, Heavenly Father, that someone may hear what you have to say this morning. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. Someone needs to hear about that powerful Jesus. Because it's a matter of life and death. In the name of Jesus, we come this morning, Father God, saying thank you and amen. Mrs. <clears throat> Jewel. Uh, we're going to get started in a second. I was kind of prepared. You know, I was uh, sitting in the back and listening to uh, the offering message. And I was saying to myself, you know, Lord, it's a confirmation of the word that you have given me to give. Because Sister Jewel was all in my message. And I'm saying that she's talking about everything I'm going to talk about. What am I going to say? <laughs> but trust me, I got a word. If I could just get to it. Okay. There we go. There we go. All righty. Just in case I get a little hot up here. So I'm not sure if they're going to be able to put the words up. I, uh, the message started moving, and it started going a different direction. So the, the, the text, the verses that I had to give have been not useless, but I'm not using them, I'm using some different verses. So I will, I'm going to go ahead and get you set up for the first one. That's Job, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 6. Job, chapter 1, verse 6. Job, chapter 1, verse 6. Okay. I'm not there yet, but I just want to get you set up. Praise God. All right. Okay, so as I was, I was preparing for this message, <clears throat> I kept reflecting on what's been happening in uh, the world and all of this bad stuff that's been going on. Um, and, it's, and it appeared that every time I turned the channel on, a news channel, it was re it's reflecting the badness in our world. Small percentage of good stuff, a large percentage of bad stuff. Uh, for example, last week there was a shooting, uh, was it last week they had the shooting in Parkland, Florida? Uh, that they talked about that. They, they kept talking about it. Um, don't know if you know, but last week there was a threat made into the school of Rancho. Uh, 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 there was, uh, uh, it wasn't just the shootings, it wasn't just the threats that they, 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 they seemed to glorify, in my opinion. It was the threats to, uh, of bombing places. Somebody made, uh, made threats about bombing a building. Uh, someone was sexually assaulted. They talk about stuff like that. Somebody's house got burglarized. They talk about that. Yeah, somebody's car got burglarized. Business got broken into. They seem to glorify those things that are bad. And I said to myself, I said, you know, Lord, why? Why do they do this? Well, a lot of it is because there's money involved in it. 
uh, uh, they, 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 they do do some good stuff. Uh, for example, a friend, uh, coworker of mine had got uh, a, a honor, if you will, with a salute to veterans. Is, is it veterans? Salute to troops. And uh, she, she was a coworker of mine, so she got, uh, she got nominated for and she got uh, uh, selected. And they came to the hospital, the medical center, and they did the news presentation. I thought that was great, um, but I couldn't find it because when I went to the channels, all I kept looking, all I kept seeing was all the bad stuff that kept happening and happening. Again, news and newspapers seem to thrive on what's negative because unfortunately that sells papers. My brothers and sisters, I, I, the, 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 the title of this message is, we are in the fight of our Christian life. The life that God wants for us to live by, that's what we are fighting for. If you are a believer, that's what you are fighting for. So I was struggling with this message because I was not sure how the, my brothers and sisters in the congregation would take it. And you know, I, I thought to myself, because I know how people, not us, I know my brothers got nothing but love and my sisters got nothing but love, but I know people, how people are. And something they don't like, what I'm going to say today, they're going to run back to pastor. And pastor, I think you ought to sit Reggie down. <laughs> now, the Reggie, <laughs> we say hallelujah to that. <laughs> but the, the, the Christian brother would say, I've been asked by God to do what God has asked me to do. So I may not be the best at it, but I'm going to give it the best I can. Amen? Amen. And then for those who are negative, towards this message, I say, Satan, get behind thee. Amen. Amen? Now that that's out of the way, I want to say that we are a group of believers that are, again, in the fight of our Christian life. Not only our life, but the life of our brothers and sisters. Lost and saved, because we have brothers and sisters that are believers and non-believers. Amen? And Satan is on attack like never before. Sister Jewel was talking about that back in, back in the 60s when she was born, that uh, they were just taking, school, uh, taking God out of school, right? And look at where we are now. Now, she's right. They have to put bullet, uh, uh, bullet, uh, metal detectors in the schools to protect our children. And they, they are correct. Our children shouldn't have to worry about being killed at school. Maybe killed with homework, maybe killed with schoolwork, but not killed by a knife or a bullet or, uh, uh, or, or, or things along that nature. We are in some bad times. My, somebody says, Brother Reggie, we're not really in no bad times. Murders are going down, thievery, robbery is going down. We're not in bad, bad times, a little bit, but not bad, bad times. And I'll tell you, don't let the enemy fool you. That's exactly what Satan wants you to think. He wants you to think that not by serving God, that it's okay not to serve God. It's okay not to be good. It's okay not to be trustworthy and faithful and righteous. So that we have a, it's, it's, that's, Satan wants you to think that it's okay not to be uh, Christian or Christ-like, okay? Satan have a lot of us, not us, not us, because we know better, but Satan has a lot of folks on the ropes by the tactics he used. Someone neither lost or is about to lose a job. Satan is whispering in their ear, telling them that they ain't no good. Someone is about or has already lost a friend to illness. 
Satan is saying to him, I told you. What does, why, where was God? Some just cannot bear life because of their mental thinking or mental issues that they're going through. I'm here to tell you that God says, I got you. I'm to turn the page. God said he has you. Suicides are on the rise. And as a matter of fact, some t- statistics show that someone dies of suicide every 11 minutes. So this internal battle of the mind is real. That fight that is going on is a real fight because it feels real to the person that's going through it. Satan wants you to be angry with your brother or your sister by saying and doing bad things to them or against them or about them. Gossiping. God don't want you gossiping about or about your brothers or your sisters, believers or non-believers. God wants you to have positive energy, positive thoughts, positive things for them. You know, not smiling. God is not a God that ain't smiling. God wants you to smile. He wants, again, that positive energy to go out instead of negative energy. We are, again, definitely in a fight for our Christian life, and we must stay on the battlefield. Some of us are continually hit time after time after time with that one-two blow. We get through it, and then we get hit again. We get through it with God's help, then we get hit again. We get through it, and we hit again. But God says again, I got you. Stay with me. And I'm, I advise you to never give up. And as that Toy Story said, never surrender. Never give up, never surrender. I want you to know today that our commander in chief, not the one in the White House, but the real commander in chief, who sits on his throne in glory, has reviewed this battle plan for the upcoming attack that we continually go through. He's continually looking at his battle plan, strategizing about where he's going to put his forces to to confront the enemy forces. And he's looking at, the, 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 and, and, and the Heavenly Father's looking at us, a situation as chess pieces. Satan did this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this, because I know he's going to do this. Because don't get me wrong, God knows what he's doing. He's, rewrite, he's rewritten his, his plans for the angels and how he's moving them to protect us. And... All we have to do is submit to God's authority. I'm reminded that we as Christians are in the crosshairs of Satan. And for those truly seeking and searching for God, Satan has been checking you out. Job 1, 6, NIV, uh, Job 1, 6 through 9, NIV version. And one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan's answered, uh, from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There's no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Satan said, does, God, uh, does Job fear God for nothing? He goes on to talk about uh, God uh, having his, his uh, protection around him. That's what uh, uh, Satan was saying that the reason why he's serving you is because you got, he has his protection around Now, if Job was considered blameless and upright, 
what makes you think Satan would not come, and, 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 and Satan went after him with the permission of God, what makes you think he ain't going to come after us? Later, in 1 Peter 5 and 8, NIV version, all this is going to be NIV version, Peter warned us to be alert and sober and, a, and, and of sober mind. Your enemy or adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Peter goes on to say, Peter goes on to say in 1, 5, uh, 1 Peter 5 and 9, resist him, standing firm in faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering that you're going through. Just one that you know that whatever you are going through, you're not going through it by yourself. And your job is to resist Satan, resist evil, resist those negative things that come against you, those negative attacks that come against you, because they will come. If you've been on this earth more than 30 minutes, you have been attacked. If you work at the VA, you have been attacked. <laughs> Had to throw that plug in there. I know myself personally, because I've been there. I've been there where I had more money than I had, I had more bills than I had money. I remember when I was sick a week or so ago, and I was coughing, and it was coughing so bad, it felt like I was getting ready to cough out a lung. It was bad. I was at work, and nothing I did or nothing I touched went well. Somebody complaining about something. But Jesus, but Jesus, Jesus was at my side. When I didn't know where to turn, I turned to Jesus and gave my situation and circumstance to him. And let me tell you what he did. He took care of that situation and that circumstance. Oh, I, I went through some things. It wasn't like I called on Jesus, Jesus moved me out the way and just took it all and I walked, you no, know, I, I went through some things. I had to go through some things because that's the only way I learned how to grow in the situation. Didn't want to go through it, but it taught me a valuable lesson to continue to trust in the Lord. Because he is worthy to be praised. And, I, you know, I think about the blood that Jesus shed for us. And I think about what can save us when we're going through some things, and it's the blood of Jesus. Because when that blood flowed, God remembers. When we're going through something, we call on Jesus. God remembers what Jesus went through for us. Jesus didn't die for laughs and, and giggles. Jesus came so that you and I could be saved and reconciled back to God. Because without him, we were lost. Amen? Christ tells Simon in Luke 22, 31 through 32, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to shift, sift all of you as wheat. In 32, he says, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Again, we're going to go through some things. Satan is always trying us. Like that, that morning when you got up and your, your spouse wasn't acting lovely. When your child wasn't doing what they were supposed to do, you were being tested. I was tested the other night, not my family, but with my brothers. And seeing how they live, 
and seeing how they, they doing things and, and how they was trying to pull me. And that's a crazy pull, trying to pull me back over. They know what I do. Matter of fact, they knew I was going to be here today. I, they were invited. I don't, I don't see them. I don't see them. But I love them. I love them enough to tell them, hey, I'm preaching tomorrow. Won't y'all come on out? I invite them all the time. But that's a decision they have to make. Whether you're going to serve God or you're going to serve him. That's a choice they have to make. But it doesn't stop you from telling them about Christ. It doesn't stop you from living that life that they see Christ in you. That's what we were put here to do is to tell others about Christ to have, because we love them that much. I don't know about you. I don't want nobody to go to hell. Now I read up on hell and hell is not a nice place. I don't want nobody to go. I don't want to go. I don't want you to go. I don't want my brothers and them to go. But again, that's a decision they have to make. And so when Simon is being tested, he was told that when you get through your situation, your circumstance, whatever it may be, come back and strengthen your brother. Come back and grab your brother. Tell them about the goodness of our Lord and Savior. About that salvation plan he has for them. Don't forget to tell others. That's what he's telling them. Strengthen them in their walk. Because it is a walk. It is a journey. The commander in chief sent his second in charge. Jesus, in case y'all don't know that, I know you do. On his mission to proclaim liberty to the captives. In Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. We have a lot of folks that need to be set free. A lot of folks. Thus the battle rages. The powers of darkness are using every destructive weapon in their arsenal to stop God's plan of salvation. And we are given a mandate to be on guard for ourselves and to rescue those that are perishing. The war declared in heaven is being waged on two fronts, in two arenas, and on two levels. First area, first arena. In John 1, 2, 16, inwardly, inwardly, the Christian struggles against the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. If you look at what you do, or what we do, or what those people do, we striving for something. I see her. I ain't supposed to be with her. My eye. She looks good to me. I ain't supposed to be with her. Okay? Pastor, I'm use you for a second. Pastor uh, Andre has a Bentley. I want a Bentley just like Pastor Andre want, got a Bentley. But not only do I want a Bentley, I want his Bentley. And then in Acts 26, 18, and outwardly the Christian struggles for the lost to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so they may receive the forgiveness of sin and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. On one battlefront, the bombardment of the enemy entices, coaxes, and tempts us with secrets through thoughts of sin. Romans 8, 5 says, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance to what the spirit, uh, with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. I ask you, what channel is your mind on? 
Romans 8, 6 goes on to say, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. You do not have to fear death if Christ Jesus is in you. Don't get me wrong. I did not say you would not die. But because the spirit of God is in you, you will have life and eternal life with God. Righteousness, we, um, you, will have, you will have life because of God's righteousness. And because of the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead is in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body because of his, of his spirit who lives in you. So the question is, is God's spirit in you? Do you chase after God by trying to do the right thing? Get out of those negative situations and try to live as Christ would want you to live. You know you feel that pain when somebody's saying something to you, know you, and they got your last nerve. And, and your old self would say, hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you where to go, how to go, and how to get there. The new one, the, the new you, the, 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 the Christian you says, my brother, my sister, I got nothing but love for you. Amen. And let me, and, and, and try to find a way to do, to tell them to back off in a godly way. Amen. That's what a battle is. Because Satan knows to send people because he has seen people don't know how to react to bad people in a good way. They, do, they don't. Look, look at, at these, these situations that are uh, occurring now. You, back in the day, I was in the club. Yeah, I ain't always been sanctified. I ain't always been saved. I, I, you know, there is a little Reggie in me. And I would go to the club. And I remember one time I was at a club, and the club is packed. So you bumping into people and stuff, you're, trying to, you're on the dance floor trying to get your dance on, get your groove on and all this other stuff, and I accidentally stepped on a brother's tennis shoe or shoes or whatever he was wearing. I did. And I must have been called every name but the child of God. Because I guess he was trying to make a point, a approval point. And I didn't know how to fight back in those days. I still don't know how to fight. <laughs> That's right. I don't know how to fight, but I got a, I got a sister that knows that fights for me. I tell, I tell people, hey, let me, you go handle, hey, go take care of this light work for me. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. But the, 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 I have some partners that are just, were back in the day were bad, just bad for no reason at all. They didn't have, they woke up bad. They went to sleep bad. They was bad. <laughs> for no reason at all. And I believe in my heart that if they were in that situation, it would have been a fight or some gunshots rung out. Well, all I said was, look, brother, I apologize. My mistake, I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. So, He who had raised Christ from the dead will also give you immortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. What am I saying? I'm saying that God has your back. He had your back from the beginning of time. He knew right now that we would be here talking about him having your back. In John 3, 16, one of my favorite verses says that God so loved the world. Well, let me back up. To show you that God has your back, John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his uh, one and only or begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The key word here is whosoever believes in him or key sentence. You got to believe in him. You got to believe he is able to do what he said he, is, he can do.
There are some who have the audacity to believe this morning that the alarm clock woke them up. But because God loved you, loved them, or loved you, or loved us so much, he allowed us to hear that alarm clock. Someone's alarm clock is still ringing this morning, and they did not get up. But again, because of his love, doesn't mean that he didn't love him, it means that time was up. But because of God's love for him, uh, uh, us, we made it here. We made it through traffic. It wasn't poisoned by food. Got here, the heat ain't killing us this morning. The cold ain't kill us this morning. Because God protected us, made sure we had a coat to put on if we needed to. A coat to take off if we needed to. It was in our right mind. If you're in the house of the Lord, guess what? You're in your right mind. I believe. Because there's other places you can be. You know there's people, at the, there's people that's gambling right now. They know it's Sunday. But we in our right mind, because of, of being believers, going to give God our, our best first. Amen? Yeah. Now, I'm saying you're not going to go out and gamble. I'm not telling you to do that. But give God his best, get your best first. In the other arena of this war, Christians are waging a battle for the salvation of lost souls. In the opposition to God, some people are actively fighting alongside Satan against that which is right and wrong. A group of non-believers are attempting to rid the believers of the righteousness. They laugh at scientific evidence that supports creation, stating life started as part of a Big Bang theory. Well, let me tell you, if you want to call God the Big Bang, go for it. I say give credit what credit is due. Hmm? Those non-believers are attempting to rewrite history to suit their non-God outlook on life. They have taken God out of schools and, and now are concerned about why we have all these shootings. They have taken God out of the work site, and, we, and, and now we have increased violence, workplace violence, threats made against people to, to kill them, shoot them, stab them. Society has a lot of parents scared to discipline their, their children for fear of being in prison. But if we start standing on the word of God, as in Proverbs 13, 24, whoever spares the rod hates their children. The one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Let me tell you, my daughter loves me and I love her. <laughs> now, we got this love-hate relationship right now. She loves to hate me because I'm not giving her driving lessons. Y'all pray for me on that one. My nerves, whew, my nerves bad. <laughs> I heard somebody say send him to school, okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we're gonna have to do. I was trying to get my brothers to do that and they got nerves better, their nerves are a lot better than my nerves, but me and her, we just don't. I'm trying to tell you, you need to do A, B, C, and you're like, I already know that. I'm like, okay, help me, Lord. <laughs> help me, Lord. I, I, I tell you what, before we both go to jail, why don't you pull over? Why don't you pull over, and we're just going to terminate this right now, and we're going to get you some professional help. I, what I love about it, though, is I asked, I said, uh, I, me and, you know, uh, me and Bree, well, you don't know, me and Bree go out and we, we attempt to get this driving thing going, you know, because, you know, I want her to be independent and be able to go to 7-Eleven, pick me up some stuff instead of me going to 7-Eleven, picking her up some stuff. And so we come back from our second lesson, and uh, uh, Melinda says, how did it go? I said, one of us ain't going to make it. We need, we need to get somebody that's going to drive, that can teach her how to, I can't do it. I, I can't do it. But that don't, that, that don't mean I don't love her. That's still my baby girl, okay? And I, I can tell you that we need to discipline our, our children. Now, I remember back in the day when I was bad. Again, I wasn't always <clears throat> sanctified or saved. I was a little nappy-headed. Yeah, I said it. Nappy-headed, snot-nosed, kid with high waters up to here, thinking I knew it all. So now I understand where Bree gets it from. So, but, but knowing where, um, uh, and I was, in, I was always in trouble. 
And I had those parents that had parents that had parents that had parents that when you did wrong, they got that behind. And it came from generation to generation to generation. Now it's in my, now it's in yours, now it's in yours. Everybody disciplined their children differently. Me, I use, well, I don't use it anymore, but back in the day, I used to get to that behind, okay? Uh, some people put their kids in timeout. Some people take the hinges to kids so bad they take the, the doors off the hinges. I'm not telling you what I, 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 I think, I'm telling you what I've heard. I mean, why is the door off this? this? Oh, he, 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 was, he was acting up. But the, the lesson was, you do wrong, you get disciplined for it. The problem is we don't discipline our children now. And that's because some of us are scared that we're going to be locked up because of them. And we have heard, I'm sure you have, stories of somebody who got put in jail because they were disciplining their children. I've been told that you're not supposed to leave any marks. That's what I was told. I'm just saying, I'm not telling you to beat your kids or anything along this line. I, I, I don't, I, my heart goes out for kids, it, it does, you know. I just can't teach kids. I can't be in a room full of kids too long. My anxiety, I got PTSD. It, so, I believe a, a majority of our issues worldwide is because parents let their kids do what they want. Because they are scared of the kids and they are scared of other parents who may believe that the kids should be left alone or they are scared of law enforcement agencies. But somehow, we do, uh, but somehow we fear those folks, law enforcement, but we don't fear God. Because if you fear God and you trust in his word and you believe his word is true, then when it says Proverbs, discipline your child. If you love them. And you, matter of fact, when you spank him, if it comes down to that, that for you new parents coming up down, uh, down the road, Spank him. Tell him, I'm doing this because I love you. <laughs> they, trust me, trust me, they may not understand it now as well as I didn't when I was getting my butt beat. But look where God and look where that discipline brought me now. Amen. All of us. That's right. That's right. Because I know if you got a couple generations back, they pulled the tree down for you. I experienced a tree once in my life. I cut that tree down when I had a chance, but I experienced that tree once. It will never grow another leaf or another branch on it. Praise God. I say again, we are in the fight of our Christian life and the battle is on. Are you prepared? Okay. While I was in the military, I was trained for war. But, and, but I constantly pray for peace. As the military police, I was, in, I was a security police in the Air Force. I was equipped with a duty belt and gear. They handed us a helmet, a vest, a duty belt, and um, a whole bunch of other gear. Of course, that, the, 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 the weapon, the rifle. Um, and we took that. When we came to work, a security police, most folks that was not security police had it made. They didn't have to lug around all that equipment. We had to lug around. But when we went out to post, we had to take our equipment and extra essential supply, excuse me, uh, with us. Because we didn't know if that was the day war was going to break out. And now was not the time to run back home and get ready. We were taught to be ready at all times. So with all that gear, and then you had those specialized, the SEALs, they had their specialized stuff, and the Green Berets had their specialized stuff, and uh, Merlinda had her specialized stuff. Yeah, I had to throw you in there, Merlinda. So anyway, um, but, but according to who we were fighting, and what we were fighting, you had specialized equipment, cold weather gear, desert gear, um, uh, things along that line. In God's army, we must also be prepared for war. 
because we are on the battlefield. Paul wrote in Ephesians, I, heard, I know y'all heard that earlier today. Praise God. Confirmation, right? But Paul wrote in Ephesians 6, 10 through 17, 7, 6, chapter 6, verses 10 through 17, thank you, about the armor of God and reminded us of who we were fighting. In verse 10, he says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on this full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, verse 14, it says, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, because they will come. Then they say that I'm at now. 17 says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Your sword. Your sword. Some of our swords are dusty. I know it ain't her because we always lifting our sword up and doing the Bible confession. Praise God for Pastor Andre and Timberley. Praise God. And instilling that in us. Instilling us that we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Praise God for them. But I tell you, trust in God because he knows exactly what he's doing. And he just needs you to stay faithful. Don't give up on him because he won't give up on you. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What purpose? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked me. We have been called to praise God, to love one another, and to fear God. That's our purpose. Because if you love somebody, take your child, for example, you're willing to tell your child, don't do that. Doing that will get you in trouble. Doing that will get you in jail. Don't do that because you love your child. Well, we're supposed to love our brothers and sisters. Don't do that. Doing that will get you in trouble with God. I tell you that because I love you. God foreknew us, foreknew us. He also predestined us to be, be conformed to the image of Jesus. And, and those he predestined, he called. And those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he glorified. And we say, if God is for us, who can be against us? I tell you again, God got your back. Yeah. We need to believe that God has our back. And stop worrying about what other people think about us. When we come into the house of the Lord, stop being scared to praise God. Yeah, we praise God differently. I'm going to rock here. Every now and then you got to kick off your, your shoes and, and take your sweater off and throw your wig to the side and, do, and give God some praise. <laughs> stop letting the world rule you. Stop letting man rule you. Don't let, but let the spirit of God take you where no man can. Amen. When the world says you are ugly, say, God said, I am made, uh, that you are wonderfully made in my image. Amen. There's not an ugly person in God's sight. When the world says you can't do something, tell them, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Amen. When the world tells you, you will always be broke. Tell them, my heavenly father owns all the hills and the sheep on them. Come on now. 
I know it just ain't me. Because of his mighty love and awesome love, Jesus has for you, I'm going to leave you with this. Short, sweet, and to the point, huh? Romans 8, 38 through 39. So why are you out on the battlefield? Because you are on the battlefield. Equip yourself. But in Romans 8, 39, 8, 8, 38 through 39, remember this. For it says, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height or death, in, or nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you from God's love. No matter how bad your situation, that you think your situation is, God says, I still love you. Come back home to me. God is a good God. Nothing you do. I don't care if it's drugs or alcohol or sexual or whatever. Whatever it is, God says, I love you. I love you, Reggie. I love you when you were still in that penny candy. I still love you. You asked for forgiveness. I love you when you was back in the club doing things you shouldn't have been doing. I'm glad you're not doing those things anymore. Matter of fact, to help you not do those things anymore, I got you a sister in Christ. I got you a helpmate. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Nothing, nothing, and I say nothing, can separate us from the love of our God. And that is something to shout about. Y'all, 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 y'all. <laughs> That's something to shout about. That's, that's all right. You know what? You ain't got to do it here. You ain't got to do it here. But when you get home and you, 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 you think about this word, and then when you hit and we say, when I didn't have enough to eat, God came through. When I need a transportation from here to there in, in the winter, God came through. God is worthy to be praised. Praise him. Because I remember back in the day when I was here in Las Vegas. Yeah, I grew up here in Las Vegas. Thinking I was bad, was nothing but a snot-nosed, knobby-headed kid. But God saved me. God saved me to be here today to tell you about his goodness, his faith, and his love for you. God is worthy. Oh, my goodness. God is worthy. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. God got your back. He got your back. Our church loves you. Our brothers and sisters love you. Our pastors love you. Our elders love you. Our min uh, ministers love you. God loves you. That's all I got. Glory. That's Let's pray.